All right, so today we're gonna be doing something really fun, something really interesting. I recently bought the Lomography Instant Wide Camera. And the reason why I bought this is because it seems to me like Fujifilm will never release a more um, user-focused type of camera. Does she look like me? Who does she look like? Please let me know. Four AA batteries, okay, great. So the model that I purchased is the Lomo Instant Wide Black Edition. Okay, so in the box of the lens box that is currently on sale right now for $180. And not gonna lie, this camera took a very long time to come and it comes with a bunch of camera lenses. It comes with, well, when I say a bunch, there's only two lenses, the wide angle lens and the close up lens. There seems to be a lot of instructions uh, in regards to the parallax. So I'm gonna have to write this down on a little notey and then put it behind the camera so I can remember. Oh yes, it also comes with a splitzer which is supposed to help me create artistic photos but it broke as I was trying to turn the thing. Man. Okay, I am going to be taking a close-up picture and in order to do that I'm gonna set it to 0.6 meters and then I add the close-up lens. 0.6 and then close up the lens. Oh! The table took a picture from me. <laughs> when are you ready? One. One. When are you? One. 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 Um, sorry for my messy hair. Like I always have messy hair. I got a picture of Winnie. Dun, dun, dun. Hope this close up works. Guys, he was too close. Oh my god. I'm really sad. <laughs> How do I take a close up picture? Uh. He sits there now. Now that I've already taken a picture of nothing. Winnie, I need to talk to you. I really need to talk to you, okay? Okay, hopefully that works. So what I've learned from this is that this camera is really easy to take a picture with of anything. Literally, you just put the camera down, accidentally hit the the little lens cap and you take a picture. If you accidentally hit the table, it'll take a picture. How convenient. <laughs> Number two. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Jackie, thank you. So I've never actually had almond milk with cereal. This was my first time. <laughs> Breakfast is served. I need some energy before I go out and take pictures. My dad's taking 
crab. I'm making ramen. The disparity is real. Do any of you guys put this in the boiling water so it could melt? So it's easier to squeeze out later. Okay, so this is my attempt to take a light painting picture using bold mode and... Okay, guys, <laughs> I don't know what happened. It's just like this now. Okay, it worked! Obviously, I had a lot of problems like I normally do. How you do bold mode is you turn on the camera switch it down to bulb mode and then using the remote you hit time and then when you hit time you should be out there and drawing the picture already and then once you're done drawing hit that time again and then it'll come out magically oh my god it look crazy i think i figured it out And this is me taking close-up pictures and I normally have a problem with this. I never look to see if I have any exposures left. I just assume that I have another exposure and I just go on about taking pictures. And then I come to realize that there is actually no more film. And then you put in a new packet and then look to see what happens. So I think I'm taking a picture. So I took the picture and then I go and look at it. Oh my gosh. I'm an embarrassment to my ancestors, the universe, this earth, this land. I'm so stupid. And then I take a picture and my picture comes out and it looks, I mean, it looks okay. It's just not really focused on the thing that I'm wanting to focus on. And then I try again. and. Eh, close, but no cigar. Eh. So, yeah, I'm having problems with this. Ooh. All right, here is my two cents on the camera. I've been playing with it for like a day or two, and I just have kind of mixed feelings about it right now. The pro for this camera is that you can control so much. Um, uh, whereas the Fujifilm Instax Y300, you cannot control anything. You don't even have control over the flash. There's no self timer, which by the way, this doesn't have a self timer either, which kind of blew my mind, but it doesn't have a con uh, it doesn't have a self timer. But what it does has is a infrared remote where you can take a picture from, I mean, not like a really far distance, but a relatively close proximity where the infrared will still work for this camera or where this camera can still catch that infrared. You can control so much more on this camera than you could on the Fujifilm Instax Y300. The only thing though is that maybe it's just a learning curve, maybe I just need to give it a little bit more time. The lenses on here, well I didn't have so much problem with the, the ultra wide angle lens but with the close up lens this lens is so hard to use and this is where I think the learning curve hits is like you just need to experiment a little bit more. Man, I spent maybe like five, six pictures and I was just experimenting with close up. I really want that bokeh type of look in the background type of blurriness, right? And that's just what I'm struggling with right now is just finding or just just learning when and where this camera focuses. I do like it, but I'm just having kind of issues right now with this camera. I mean, it's a great camera. Um, I wouldn't say compact, because I mean, it's pretty big. And also it comes with a lot of extra attachments, you know, extra 
lens attachments and stuff like that. But I mean, I don't think it's that bad for an analog camera. The only thing right now for me is that I just really need to learn how to use the, um, I just really need to learn how to use the close-up lens and that I think is going to take a little bit of time. I just love being able to control so much more and you guys know how much I love the Fujifilm Instax wide film, you know, how it's so big and I mean, it is a little bit dare I say, smaller than the Polaroid film. But for me, I feel like it is enough. Overall, you get a really good picture for a relatively not too crazy price. Jack's barking. I know that there's the instant rope Archon, but that one is way out of my price range. That is so expensive. After using it for the last two days, I don't think it's the best camera that I've ever used. I definitely think that Polaroid has the better camera systems. And Jack's gonna barge in. He did. Hi, hey, Jack! I think that Polaroid definitely has the better camera systems, but that's Polaroid, and Polaroid doesn't really support Fujifilm and Stax wide film. So yeah, I had to invest in one of these myself. But maybe yeah, in the future, and Winnie's gonna come in. So, um, what was I even talking about? Um, hi, Winnie. Okay, I'll just leave the door. Oh, by the way, I do want to mention this shutter button is really easy to hit. There's not much of like uh, resistance. When you push on it, you just like kind of push on it easily and it just kind of takes the picture. And also this right here, how you turn it on and off the camera. I just want to mention that although this has not happened yet, but I know for sure it'll happen because it's actually really easy to turn it on and off. You just switch this. So if, you, if you're going to put this in your bag and you have a lot of stuff, going on in there it could potentially turn this on i've not experienced that yet but it's one of the things that i need to look out for so the lomography instax camera actually turns on when you push this button and then you have to twist the lens and that's how you turn it on i like that more because i can't obviously push a button and turn on a camera by twisting it like that all at the same time when I leave it in my camera bag. So for me, I think that's a little bit safer, but for this camera, it is easier to access and you just kind of spin this and I don't know, it's just something that you just have to look for. I have not experienced it yet though. Yeah, so overall, I just wanna say that I think this camera is a really great camera. It has a lot of potential, it just has a lot of learning curves. I just have to learn a lot about the close-up lens and not being not taking blurry pictures and just knowing exactly where the camera focuses on rather than just taking a picture of something close up and you think you're close enough or you're far enough but you're really not um, yeah I just have to experiment a little bit more I'm gonna probably have to go through a couple more pack of film in order to learn it but um, that is this is a hobby that I've gone into and I love so I guess I just have to learn so that's gonna be it for today guys and I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video if you did please do give a thumbs up and also like and share and comment as always and let me know what you guys want to see in my next video alrighty adios